Should you buy a new construction home or buy an already existing home? It all depends on you. So to help you decide which direction best fits your situation, I'm gonna give you my five pros and five cons to consider when buying a new construction home. And as an added bonus, I'm also taking you on a tour of a new construction community just west of Atlanta, Georgia in Carrollton. So you can see for yourself what a new construction home has to offer. We'll be driving through the community so you can see what the neighborhood is like. And we'll also be going inside two great floor plans available in this community. All right, before we get started on this community and getting into the five pros and five cons of buying a new construction home, First off, I want to remind you that if you like this home or if you're ready to start your home journey, home buying journey, be sure to reach out to me, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. You can also start looking at homes on my website at www.ben.searchlikeabroker.com. You can go ahead and register on that website looking at homes. We do not sell your information like Zillow and Realtor.com, Homes.com, all those big websites out there. They will sell your information. You will get a call from every realtor in the state of Georgia and their mama. So you register on our website, you'll get a call from me or someone on my team. That's it. Whenever you hit a uh, request showing or request information, only be one person that gives you a call. That's me. So uh, make sure you check out my website, register on there, give me a call. Let's get started today for you. But anyway, this community is the uh, Windmill Park in Carrollton, Georgia. This is by Adams Homes. And Adams Homes recently won an award by the Greater Atlanta Home Builders Association a few years ago, and they named them the Builder of the Year. So these are some great homes, very well-built homes uh, in Carrollton. Uh, this is in the Carrollton Elementary, Carrollton Middle, and Carrollton High School Districts. Uh, the Carrollton City School District is a great school district. Uh, you can look them up. There's Plenty of great athletes. There's actually the quarterback for uh, the Carrollton Trojans right now. He is uh, a, one of the top recruits in the nation for football. Uh, and so we'll find out where he goes soon. Maybe it'll be Georgia. Maybe it'll be USC out in uh, Southern California. We'll see where he goes, but he is a really top recruit right now. He's not the first one to come out of Carrollton either. There's been some other NFL players come out of there recently as well in the past few decades. So it's it's a really good school district to be in, especially if you're in, in a sp sports program. Education is really high up there as well. So these homes right here, these homes start out in the three tens. So a great price. Um, they are ranging in size from 1400 square foot to just over 2000 square foot. Uh, you've got three to four bedroom plans with two bedroom all the way up to three and a half bathroom plans. There is an HOA in this community. The HOA in this community is $2,000 a year. Why is it $2,000 a year? Because they take care of your landscaping for you. As long as you don't have a fence in your backyard, they'll cut the front and the backyard for you. And that's why it's $2,000 a year. So if you're not the type like me to enjoy cutting your grass, then this is a great opportunity for you. There's so many people that I talk to, especially young couples who are so excited to cut their grass for the first time on their home, new home. And then you talk to them a year later and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not looking forward to spring to start cutting the grass again. So if you're the type that doesn't really want to maintain a yard, maybe you're not there all the time, maybe you're too busy uh, with work or, or whatnot uh, to, to maintain a yard, maybe you don't have the green thumb to, to keep the, the weeds out, a great opportunity in this community for you. So that's the rundown of the community. Let's get started with pro number one when buying a new construction home, and that is there's no bidding war. So if you have uh, been out in the market or if you've heard of people that have been on the market to buy a home, uh, sometimes you, there's, there's a couple of different things that happen. Either you're not there fast enough to get, to get into the home, which you don't have that problem with my team because we have showing partners and everyone else to get you in the home. But let's just say you saw a home, you're not able to get into it until Friday um, and it's Monday. What, what if the home goes under contract? That happens all the time. So uh, with uh, a new construction home, as long as you can get in there, you uh, and you're the first one in there, there's not 15 offers on the home. It's you can get in there, you write the offer, it's your home for what they're asking. 
so that's that's pretty great. Um, you know, but there still is that if you sleep on it, you may not sleep in it. So you still need to have that mentality. If you see this home, you get in the home, you like the home, we need to get you started. We need to get that offer put in. So that is your home. Uh, that does bring us to the first con as well. The first con, which goes hand in hand with there's no bidding war, builders also typically do not negotiate price. So what they are asking for, for the home, that is where, uh, <laughs> what you're gonna have to pay. Uh, it's not, it's kind of like when you go to, uh, you know, Best Buy or wherever to buy a TV, you don't get to negotiate the price anymore. When you go to buy a new build home, they already have run the numbers and you uh, don't get to negotiate. They say, all right, this is the price of the home. But that's why when you're working with me as an agent, the first question I ask are, what incentives do you have? You know, they don't negotiate on the price maybe, but they may have incentives. Like if you use their preferred lender, they'll give you some closing costs. Or um, if you use their preferred lender, or if you can close within a certain amount of time, maybe they might knock some off the price. So there is a little room here and there to negotiate, but it's, it's very fixed things for negotiation. It's not, um, hey, let's haggle the price back and forth a little bit, go back and forth, let's see what we can do. It's, this is what they have, this is what they're allowed to do. It's very corporate um, in, in most cases. So that's, that's why in some cases, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a local small builder that he builds one home here and there, you can negotiate. But if this is, you know, like Adams homes or DRB or DR Horton, that's very corporate. So this is what they ha are allowed to offer and that's it. So you don't get the bidding war, but that's okay. So we are in our first home. This is the 2030 floor plan. Uh, Adams Homes is very original with their names. It is the 2030 floor plan because it is 2,030 square feet. <laughs> uh, it is a four bedroom, two bath plan with a two car garage on it. Um, but yeah, check out the home. Uh, so the pro number two to buying a new construction home is that if you get in, in certain cases, you have the ability to pick options, which is, you know, you get to pick the floors, you get to pick the countertops. Maybe you get to pick a few colors here and there. Maybe uh, you get to pick if it's a shower tub combo in the in the spare bed bathroom, or if it's a if it's a stand up shower option. There's different things that you get to pick, which is great. Uh, getting to pick your own things gets to make it your own. It gets to make it your home. Um, so that's that's really great about it. You know, it's it's a very exciting thing to get to pick your options, the home is a little bit more you, it's customized to you in, in, in certain aspects. Even if it is uh, the same floor plan that 15 other homes have in it, you can make it unique in your own way with different options that they have available to you. So, so that's a great thing. Um, now, uh, when it comes to uh, the con number two, uh, those upgrades that you choose and options, sometimes they cost money. <laughs> So what you see online is usually a base price, just like a car. And then you start to add in these options and uh, that's where you get a higher price than what's listed. So, you know, maybe you wanna put in a covered back porch or maybe you wanna put in the stand up shower with a glass door, or you wanna upgrade uh, to the, the tier three granite countertops or whatever. Um, different things will cost different money. Uh, that's part of the issue. And then also, uh, when you pick these options and you're early enough in the process, uh, that also means your home's not going to be ready for a little bit, which depending on your situation may not be a bad thing. But if you are, uh, needing a home within 30 days and all they have is the concrete board for the foundation, then, you know, you're talking maybe six months more out. Uh, sometimes builders will get in there, they'll offer the home when it's about 60 days out, 30 days out from closing, but you don't get to pick your options. Or if you do get to pick your options, you're talking three to six months, maybe more, depending on how custom the build is. So, um, that's, that's the, like I said, we're getting into the pros and cons on it. If you have time, then that gives you a little bit 
a wiggle room on it. Uh, this home here, options have already been picked. So uh, it's ready for closing in 30 days and it's a new construction home. So there are options out there, but there's also ones where, they're, where they've got the slab poured and that's it. They're about to start framing. That's gonna be a while till it's ready to go, okay? So pro number three. Uh, this is it compared to a resale home uh, with a brand new home, you don't have to worry about upgrade, like upgrading your systems or renovating or replacing any parts. Uh, the, the three main things is your roof, your HVAC system and your water heater. Those are the three major systems. If you, if you don't have hot water, uh, then it's going to be a bad day. If you got a leak in, leak in your roof, it's going to be a bad day. And if your heat or your air do not work in Georgia, it's going to be a bad day. So uh, you don't have to worry about those major components for a while in most cases. Um, so that's, that's the benefit. Uh, the, the downside is, is that, um, you know, if you do want to, you know, with, when, with those major things, it's not an issue, but um, the, to come into con number three is uh, you can't repaint, uh, you can't add accent walls, you can't really customize your home in that sense um, after the first year. And the reason for that is that most, well, you can, but in most cases, builders offer a one-year uh, touch-up, paint touch-up, um, because, you know, homes settle. That's normal. That's perfectly normal for homes to settle. Um, and in that first year, you're going to get some settling and nail pops. And what that is, is where the, the screws or the nails may come out a little bit of the sheetrock and expose. Um, and a lot of big builders, what they'll do is they'll allow uh, you to call as long as it's within that first year uh, to call them. They'll come and touch up the walls for you, uh, put the screws or nails back in. They'll repaint the wall so it'll look brand new and then you're good to go. But if you paint the walls, they will not touch a wall that's been painted by you. So if, if you came into this house where they've got the, the light gray uh, repose or agreeable gray that they have, and you came in and you painted a, an accent wall, navy blue, they will not touch the navy blue wall. They'll paint the other ones for you and touch them up, but any walls that you've taken care of and painted yourself, they won't touch. So um, why replace it on your dime when the builder's gonna do it for you? Just wait a little bit, wait a year, and then you can do it yourself. Um, that, that's the way that I do it. And when it comes to that yearly touch up, they do have a deadline so what I tell my buyers is, is uh, on closing day, we put in put a, uh, a task or an appointment in your calendar, an alarm to go off at about 11 months. That way you can call them. They'll come out one time. So if you call at six months, then they come out at six months. And then if something happens in that time afterwards, then you're out of luck. You got to take care of it yourself. So get a notebook. Put it in your junk drawer. I have a junk drawer. Most people have a junk drawer in the kitchen or wherever it is, bathroom, wherever, nightstand. Just have a notebook, put where things need to be touched up, what what things need, what cracks you may come come up, what you know, seal may break um, on a piece of sheetrock somewhere. Just make a note of it. And then um, at about 11 months, contact the builder and then have them come repair all those things then you go make your accent walls and whatever else at that point too. Um, so yeah, those that's your third con when it comes to buying a home. Um, we'll get started with the next uh, pro number four when we get into the next home. But yeah, this home here, uh, I really enjoyed this, this neighborhood, this community. It had some really nice touches on it. Uh, the four bedrooms, you know, this is one thing to think about is if you don't need four bedrooms, if you're fine with three, um, sometimes to make the fourth bedroom, I mean, they're, they're cutting into space. You can see these rooms aren't huge, but this is a four bedroom plan. It's 2000 square feet. Uh, you know, I talked with a buyer about this the other day. 2,000 square feet divided over three bedrooms is a lot more space in each room than compared to a four bedroom. So if you don't need it, um, it's that's one thing to consider. 
Um, what I really liked about these homes is the, uh, the covered back porches. I love a great covered back porch. And the fact that I can sit out there uh, without <laughs> uh, having to worry about looking and saying, man, I gotta cut the grass tomorrow. I can go out and enjoy it because they cut the grass for me. Uh, the yard isn't huge, but that's okay. I don't need a huge yard. Um, I, my, you've got parks nearby that you, if you've got the little ones, you can take them places. Um, you've got the green belt in, in Carrollton, which is a great paved walking path that you can go. It, it goes all over town. You've got some great lakes uh, in Carrollton that you can go to. There's plenty of outdoor things that you can do in Carrollton um, that, that are right down the road from you. This community here is right behind the, the Kroger, right up the street from uh, the Walmart and Publix. It's in a great location, it's super close to everything. Carrollton High School is actually right on the other side of the woods that was back there. So this was a great little home. I enjoyed it tremendously. I loved the neighborhood. It's super convenient to everything. So I really enjoyed it. This one here is the 1727 uh, floor plan and it is uh, 1,727 square feet. It is a three bedroom, two bath home with a uh, two car garage on this home as well. It's, it's, it's a nice home. I really enjoyed this one. Um, check it out and let's go over some more pros and cons. Uh, pro number four to buying a new construction home is that, especially if you get in early enough, uh, new construction homes tend to appreciate faster than a resale home. Uh, all homes uh, in general, especially in the larger picture, uh, appreciate over time, and as long as you take care of it. If you don't take care of the home uh, and it starts to deteriorate, because I, I, I call it, say that homes are, are a living thing, because in a way they are. If you do not take care of a home, it will die, as in it will deteriorate a lot faster than if you take care of it. Um, so, um, uh, they appreciate faster because they are, uh, a newer home. And also because if you get in early enough into the community homes, uh, the, the, the first homes in the community are usually the least expensive and every three or four, two, three, four homes that are built in the community, the builder will raise the price of the home. So, you know, even if it's $2,500, $5,000, it may not be sound significant, but if they're building a hundred homes in that community, that's a big deal. That's um, on top of what the uh, of appreciation of the rest of the homes in general are going up. So if you get into phase one and they're building a phase two and a phase three, your home is gonna go up substantially while you're living there. Even if you get into one of the last few homes, it's a new home, it's a highly desirable home. You're not going anywhere for a long time. I'm, I'm assuming even if it is just two or three years, your home will still continue to appreciate at, at a much higher rate than a home, let's say, that was built in the 60s. So I'm not saying that this home that was built in the 60s won't appreciate quickly because homes are just like land. Um, it's, a, it's a resource that, you know, yeah, they'll continue to build homes, but we are in a market where we are very short on homes right now, available homes. So, uh, and that's never going to change. We are so many years behind on homes that value will continue to go up. Eventually we're going to run out of space to where homes are going to increase even more. That's, you know, in the future forever down the road, but yeah, so that's what's going on there. Um, and our first or con number four is, um, uh, New construction homes tend to cost more than a resale home. Um, you know, this same home, uh, but built in the 70s, 80s, or 90s, uh, is going to cost a lot less as a it, when it was built in the 70s, 80s, or 90s than the, a home of this same size and caliber than a home now. So, uh, if you, but all, like I said before, the positive of it, even though it costs a little bit more, is that you're not looking to replace the roof anytime soon. You're not replacing the HVAC system anytime soon. You're not replacing the water heater anytime soon. Everything is brand new. So as long as you take care of it, it's gonna last a lot longer. So you're not putting in that extra money that you may have to put in. Um, 
you know, three years down the road, you may need to replace the roof. Um, or you're going to be paying higher insurance premiums if the roof is more than 11 years old in Georgia. Um, so you, yeah, it may be a little bit more expensive, but in other aspects, it's going to cost you a little bit less. Um, so that's something to weigh, uh, is then that's why we're going through the pros and cons. Is this uh, a pro that it costs a little bit more, but you don't have to worry about the, the extras that you have to pay for down the road, uh, sometime soon. Or would you rather save a little bit of money now and then you know replace one of those major systems a little bit sooner um pro number five uh this is you can take it i talk, kind of talked about this before is that you can take advantage of buyer incentives uh this this is huge um because you know like i said if you can get in there quick enough there's no bidding war um, depending on how the market does, um, as soon as interest rates go down, I've talked about it there. It's, you're not on the sidelines. If you're waiting for interest rates to go down, you're at the starting line. So, uh, if you can get in now, uh, to a new construction home, you can take advantage of buyer incentives to where they can offer to buy down your rate. They can offer to pay closing costs. Uh, they can offer to maybe knock some off the price. Yeah. You have to use their prefer preferred lender more than likely but you're getting a really great price compared to, you know, maybe someone on a, on a great resale house um, that's been on the market two days, but it checks every box for you, but it doesn't check every box just for you. It checks every box for 10 other people. You know, it's going to be your highest and best offer. It's going to be, you're not asking for closing costs because no one else is, and you want that house really bad. So, um, that's an advantage that you get. As long as you're the first one in the door to get, say that house is mine, uh, then you're okay. So con number five, this is the, this is a big one. Uh, this is, uh, when you go to a new construction community, it's, uh, they've got the model home there in a lot of cases and they're just kind of dangling it there for you. Just like, uh, just like a lure for a fish. They want you to go into the home. They want you to come see it. It's all inviting. They got the flags, they got the balloons, they got everything for you. But if you step foot in that model home and you start talking to them and you don't have your agent with you, there is a chance that if you want that home, they will not let you use an agent. Uh, I had this problem the other day. Uh, we have them under contract right now. Uh, he went to bat for me when they sent, because they didn't tell him this. They sent him an email afterwards and said, by the way, it, our policy is if you don't show up with your agent at the, at the first meeting, then uh, you are electing to not be represented as I believe is how he told me what they said. Um, he went to bat for me. He told me, no, I need to be represented. He'd been watching my videos. Um, and they said, okay, we'll, we'll allow it. Um, I've talked about it before. It's a big deal to be represented, whether it's, uh, whether you're buying a new construction or buying a resale home, I'm here, I'm here to help. I'm here to guide you on the path. When it comes to new construction homes, there are certain pitfalls that you can get into, um, whether a home's not being done on time, whether they're trying to come back on things that they said that they would do and they're not doing, um, contracts are a big thing as well because a lot of builders don't use uh, a standard uh, Georgia Real Association of Realtors uh, contract. They'll use their own contracts that um, look out for themselves. Um, you know, if they're writing it, they want to make sure that they have the ability to get out of the, the deal if they can. Um, they want to make sure that you don't have as many abilities to get out of the deal. Um, they want to make sure that if, if any way possible, they get to keep your earnest money. So whenever they send the contract, just like we did the other day with me and my buyer, we went over the, the main things, you know, how much is the home going to be? When is it going to be done? What is the appraisal contingency? What is the, uh, financing contingency? All these things that are protections that are put into place. We need to make sure that they're there. So you are still protected. Um, that's, that's what a, an agent like me brings to the table is I've gone through the bad things or heard other people go through the bad things because I try and not get, go through those things, but I have the experience 
to where I know what to look out for. Uh, you know, uh, this may be your fourth or fifth home, but still I'm on, you know, that for the month. So I know how many, I know exactly what kind of things to look out for. I know how the market's going. I'm here to protect you. So uh, that's, that's what I bring to the table. That's what an agent brings to the table. A good agent, a top producing agent like me brings to the table. Um, your job is to be, protect yourself when it comes to a huge investment. So make sure that you protect yourself by using a buyer's agent. It doesn't cost you anything else. It just now you have at this point, it doesn't cost you anything else. Let me word it that way, because there is a, a settlement in place to where that may change. And we'll come out with a video later when that is when that happens, when the settlement takes place. That's a whole other can of worms. People are talking about it. It's too soon to talk about because the court hasn't even approved what's going on yet. When the court approves it, then we will talk about it. We will unpack it. I'll tell you what that means, because it's not what you hear in the media, I'll tell you that. But we'll unpack that can of worms then. So now that you've got my top five pros and cons of a new construction home, which route do you think is best for you? New construction or resale? Leave a comment below and let me know. And remember, if you're ready to buy or sell a home, me and my team will be happy to get you from where you are to where you wanna be. So reach out today. My contact information is below and in the description, so reach out anytime. I come out with new videos every week with exclusive Atlanta community tours, all while educating you with everything you need to know when buying a home in Georgia. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that like button too, and I'll see you next week.